now we're up to the next chapter of Blackberry Bobby. Blackberry Bobby has now been placed in an orphanage and his mother has been released from a mental institution and the step along with the stepfather uh, they have gone to the courts and persuaded them to give Bobby back to them. So they arrive at the orphanage in Charlotte, North Carolina and they pick up Bobby. Bobby of course is distraught. Um, I know I'm feeling like this is the end of the world, and uh, I can't believe I have to go back to be with this woman. But at the beginning, of course, she acts kind of nice, I guess, cold but nice. And we drive all the way to Michigan, where they now have moved to live. Jack has been dishonorably discharged from the Army, the stepfather. Um, he and she were arrested for robbing someone <clears throat> at a rest stop. Anyway, that summer is probably the worst summer of my life by far. Um, shortly after arrival, they're still drinking, and Jack's still doing drugs. Um, one of my other brothers has also been removed from the home, uh, Jackie, <clears throat> who I guess is like a couple years younger than me. I'm now seven, eight, and um, seven or eight, and Jackie, um, I guess, was one of the other children abused and uh, he wouldn't sit still while she was cutting his hair so she cut the top of his ear off and he's now living in a foster home and that led to uh, probably the first big incident of this summer we went to visit him and he lived with a fam foster family that lived on a farm and they had lots of cats and uh, we played with the cats and but we were told to make sure we put the right kittens back in with the right mother and we got home later that night and the woman called to say that one of the kittens had been killed because it had been put back in the wrong thing and Jean went into and got a ping pong paddle and came out to whip me and started to whip me and started going crazy and Jack said, you know, try to intervene, I guess, and uh, they got into a fight, punching, kicking, screaming, they were both drunk and Jean came out of the bedroom with a shotgun and shot through the hole in the wall and um, it downgraded or de-escalated, I guess, from there real quickly. <clears throat> then the second thing that happened that summer was uh, the thing that really changed my life. Um, Jack took me to a Detroit Tigers baseball game where he met up with another m Marine buddy of his and they were drinking the whole time. And um, anyway, they ended up going to play poker with another couple buddies and they all got drunk and s smoked dope and... I was running around the house and they got into a discussion about Jean's other son, her, my oldest stepbrother, Timmy, and how he had been sent back to live with Jack. Jack was bitching about the fact that he had been caught in a sexual situation with the boy and that he was sure that all the Loomis children were gay or, as he would say, homos. And um, so I guess somewhere in there they decided to see if I was gay or a, a quote homo and that was the day that I was raped and molested. And Jack threatened to tell my mother if I told her anything and saying that I'd been bad and she'd beat me again. And later that summer, um, I always had a problem wetting the bed even up until I was 15. Um, but that summer I wet the bed and um, I was scared for her to find out and so she, I guess the smell and she found that I'd been wetting the bed and she came in and she just went crazy. And she, at this time, had like a belt that she cut into uh, sort of a snake-like tongue V at the end so she could really whip me with it. And she started chasing me around the house, just beating me and beating me. And I ran into the bathroom and tried to get between the sink and the uh, toilet so that she couldn't get a good shot at me, I guess. And when I went to dive, I hit my head on the toilet. And, of course, it cracked my skull wide open. And I ended up having to go to the hospital. And it was at the hospital that they started asking me how this had happened. And my mother had told me, you tell them what happened, they'll take you away, you'll never see me again. And I can't explain where the courage came from or why. I guess I think it was just out of fear. I said, she did it. And next thing you know, I was on a plane back to the orphanage at Charlotte, North Carolina. And I would stay there until I um, got my first foster family at 10. Um, third, fourth, fifth grades were just um, non 
I, I managed to, to get passed on grade to grade. I'm not sure how. In fifth grade, I brought home my no straight Fs because at that time, the manager of the orphanage would give you seven licks for every F, and I got 49 for seven Fs. Um, I've got one foster family when I was 10. <clears throat> they lived in the country, but it didn't work out. A lot of it had to do with me, and some of it had to do with them. And then that's when my life would take the what would be for the best a change. And I was put in a group home in Greensboro, North Carolina, and I would stay there till I graduated from high school and went to college. And that will be where we pick up the next story of Blackberry Bobby.